Good job, Drew. By this point in the year, most of you know me. Um, my name is Caro. I'm an RA on 3M. And one of the big things in my life is storytelling. So I wanted to take this opportunity to share with y'all the story of the an experience at Stanford that has fundamentally changed my life. If you were to log on to Facebook, pull up my profile, and look at photos from the winter quarter of my sophomore year, you would never know that I was anything but happy. Those months are filled with smiles and weird faces with two of my closest friends. Though at that point, we're still a quarter from being graced with our permanent nickname. Uh, we're known as the diplet, dipshit triplets, but that's a different story. <laughs> Those photos do not tell you that the only reason we were spending so much time together is because one of my friends, Alex, had just gone through the worst breakup of her life. Unless you zoom in very closely, you cannot see the bags under my eyes, a result of my second consecutive 20-unit quarter, where I thought sleeping four hours a night was completely normal. And, perhaps most strikingly, they only document the daylight hours not the hours spent together after dark, nearly every day of the week, drinking away Alex's pain and my stress, to the best of our ability. In hindsight, it's not surprising that some of the darkest moments of my four years at Stanford fell during those months. The reality is, I've made mistakes over my four years here, and to you, Robley, I'd like to admit that I've screwed up. In some little ways, I've messed up first dates and double booked myself left and right, and maybe I've forgotten to turn in a homework assignment from time to time, but in bigger ways too. For a long time, I let myself grapple with mental health alone in silence, and by virtue of this, I lashed out at friends and used alcohol as a crutch. For months during my sophomore and junior years, as my grades got better, my physical and mental health got worse. What they don't tell you about these situations and these moments is that you don't only affect yourself. Without realizing it, in those months, with my cavalier approach to alcohol, I was impacting the people around me. That spring, still deep in the heart of a time where I was drinking heavily, my friends and I made the decision to go out to an all-campus party. On Saturday night, we drank from 8 until 10, and then made our way from West Campus to the row with our remaining alcohol and a flask in my pocket. The truth is, I don't remember a lot of that night until a freshman friend of mine interrupted a conversation I was having with the guy I left. Kara, she said, I need you right now. I really, really need you. I was peeved to have been interrupted but I went with her. A flight of stairs later, she pulled me into a bathroom where all of our mutual friends but one were gathered around the final one who was leaning unconscious against a wall. Drunk and scared, I remember slapping his face, pulling up his eyelids, and doing anything else I thought might bring him back to consciousness. That was the single scariest room I have ever been in. As his girlfriend cried in the arms of a friend, I watched him slip further and further away from me. I have never sobered up so fast. I'm calling an ambulance, I said. I remember the dispatcher's questions and showing up and helping the sheriff and paramedics find him. I remember watching him be transported out through a room of drunken revelers and staying up crying most of the night sick with worry. But most of all, I remember the next morning being furious. I was incensed that our friends had not taken care of him and angry that he had not taken care of himself. 
So the reality is that at the time, I'm not sure my habits were any better than theirs. I could not balance the weight of my love for my friends and my disappointment in them. And I worried. I worried that he would be mad at me for calling and that he would be horrified at the implications of being, having been taken to the hospital for his underage drinking. But when I saw him next, he hugged me, the tightest I have ever been held. He thanked me, and for a while, we both just stood there and cried. That night changed both of our behavior for the better, and our continued friendship has changed my life. There's something profound about being someone's guardian angel, even for a moment, and knowing perhaps you saved a life. I have never once regretted calling that ambulance. And I've lived my life differently since that night. I started drinking less and opening up to my friends more. I've continued to screw some things up, but I also feel like it's taught me to confront the more difficult things and handle them right. When things started to get dark during my junior year, I consulted my friends instead of a bottle. I went to CAPS. Through the years since, that same friend has taught me the power of trust and compassion. We remind each other about self-care, to spend time with friends, to sleep, to relax more than every once in a while. And most importantly, I know that if you look at the photos that either of us take now, the happiness you'll see is genuine. Thank you.